Hi, I'm Scott Bradford from the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team, and today in the spirit of this Halloween season, we're going to be making a ghost pendant from start to finish. Now first we're going to start off in ZBrush, then we'll go to 3D printing and casting, and then I will hand it over to my teammate John Sarton to finish out the stone setting and the Luxart. If you have any questions about the individual processes in this video, feel free to check out the Resource Center at RioGrande.com, or always feel free to reach out to us. So let's get started! Since it is the season for all things scary, today we are going to be making a ghost within ZBrush. So it's mainly an excuse to play around with some of the cloth dynamics because they're fun to play with. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a, kind of like an armature, a, kind of a head and shoulders, and then we're going to drape a plane over that using our cloth dynamics and then add a bit of jewelry flair to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab a sphere 3D, left click and drag to bring it out, immediately hit the T key to go into edit mode and click make poly mesh 3D. So this is going to be kind of my head. Uh, I'm going to need another one down here for kind of like a torso. So I'm going to duplicate my sphere, bring up the gizmo, and start messing with some of the scaling here until I get a rough approximation of what I'm looking for. We could also add a bit of shoulder up here as well. If I hit B on my keyboard to bring up my brush menu, uh, press M to filter by brushes that start with M and bring up my move brush. I'm gonna bring the draw size pretty high up, hit X to turn on symmetry, and now I can just kind of bring out some shoulders here. I'm not sure how noticeable they'll be, but we can we can play around with this as we go. And I think I'm gonna take the head and I'm gonna scale it up even more kind of bring it up a little bit just kind of tinkering with stuff doesn't have to be perfect because there's going to be a sheet draped over it so something like that i think looks okay so now let's grab our plane so i'm going to click append bring in a plane 3d select it and then go to my gizmo to get it in the right orientation so i'm going to rotate it while holding shift to 90 degrees and drag it up above my armature. Now I have to scale this out because this is going to be representative of my cloth. Now when we start actually draping it over our armature here, um, it'll just depend on how far you want it to hang down here uh, based on the size of your armature. So you may have to do a bit of playing around with the overall size of this plane to get that height that you want. Let me scale that down just a hair. And I think we're ready to start playing around with some of the cloth dynamics. So up in my top menu up here, I'm gonna click on the dynamics menu and I'm gonna dock this over to the left side of the screen. So now I can play with some of the settings here. So I'm gonna set the strength to about 0.7 and enter firmness. I'm gonna drag that down to one. I do want it to drape and start to kind of fold a little bit, but I don't want it to fold too much. I am going to turn floor collision off because I don't want it to actually touch the floor. I actually want it to drape all the way down, so I'm going to turn that off. Uh, self collision, I am going to turn up to two. Um, I don't want this plane to overlap itself because we're going to be kind of extruding some thickness out of this plane. And if we overlap it, then that just creates problems when it comes to exporting and 3D printing and that, that sort of thing. So... Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep that from happening if I can. And I do wanna turn on collision volume uh, because that's what's going to tell ZBrush that we want this plane to actually collide with our armature. And I'm gonna turn inflate up to probably around eight or so. And it's always good practice that if you change something in your subtools or, or anything else, 
Um, always hit recalculate on here if you have this collision volume calculated. So that way it's going to take all your new settings into account. Uh, and I don't think I'll need to adjust anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and click run simulation. So it seems to be draping pretty well. And then once you get to a point where you're happy with how it's draping, you just click run simulation again to stop it. And there we go. Now, as you can see, um, my plane is pretty low poly at the moment, so it's very jagged looking. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. And I'm going to go into the geometry palette. And I'm going to go to dynamic subdivisions and turn that on. I'm not going to click apply yet. I'm just going to turn on dynamic subdivisions. And then over here, I'll hit recalculate one more time and run the simulation again. So now I'm getting a much better representation of uh, what my ghost is going to look like after it's smooth. So we'll let it go just a little bit longer. I'm going to stop it there. Something like that. That looks, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. The next thing we need to do is we do need to add some thickness to it. And the reason why we use dynamic subdivisions is because now we can actually uh, add dynamic thickness to it. So we want to make this thick enough to where we're going to be able to cast it. So I'm going to shoot for about one millimeter thick. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that when I bring this up, just we'll say 0.2, you can see it's added thickness on it. But right now, this geometry is just a simulation. It's not actually applied to the plane just yet. So in order to actually take a measurement from it, I do have to click Apply. So I'm going to click Apply, and now I can use my transpose line to take some measurements. So I'm going to bring up my gizmo, turn off the gizmo, find some snap points here, and take a quick measure. So right now I'm at about 0 0.40 millimeters. I want to go thicker than that. So I'm going to control Z to undo that apply that I did, and I'm going to go thicker. Uh, let's say 0.5 or so. Oh, that looks way too thick. Uh, we'll say 0.36 maybe. Let's let's give that a try. Uh, so I'm going to click Apply. Bring my transpose line back up. Find a couple snap points on that end. And I'm at about 0.72. Now, one thing that uh, I probably should have done first. Uh, actually, I'm going to undo that real quick. Is I need to look at the overall size of this. So let's take a look. I'm going to click on size and geometry palette, and I'm at about 17 millimeters tall. I think I'm going to bump that up a little bit. I think I'm going to bump that up to about 30. And now I'm going to play with the thickness again. Uh, we'll bring that up to about 0.5. Click apply. Grab some snap points. There we go. So now I'm at about 1.01 .01 millimeters. So that's a little easier for casting. Although I'm just going to bump this up just a hair, just to account for any kind of shrinkage and polishing. Click apply. Let's take a final measurement. 1.1. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. But this doesn't have to be super thick. So now we've got our shape, we've got some thickness there, we've confirmed that the thickness is where we want it, and now let's move on to the next step. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of stones right here where the eye holes would be. Now the technique I'm going to be using is uh, gone into further depth in the bead setting in ZBrush video. So if you want a more in-depth training on how to do the, the following, uh, feel free to go ahead and watch that video. So I'm going to load in my stone here that I've made. And as you can see with this, I have a cutter here. I have four beads or prongs, and then the stone is inside there. 
I think I'm going to end up flush setting these stones so we don't have any prongs or beads. Uh, so with this, I won't need them. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these prongs, but I am going to leave the cutter there so I can uh, more easily locate where those st stones are supposed to go. So before I create the insert mesh brush with this, I'm going to check the size. So I'm going to go into geometry, click on size, and we are at about 1.5 in diameter. That's what we want. We, we're going to be putting in a 1.5 millimeter stone in as the eyes. So the size looks good and I can go ahead and create my insert mesh brush. I'm going to merge these together real quick. So I'm going to select the top one, click on merge, merge down, click OK, put it in the right orientation. So this will be sitting up on top. Press B to go into my brush menu and click on create insert mesh. Uh, this will be a new brush, so go ahead and click new. And there we go. Now we have our insert mesh brush. So I can go back to my cloth here and I'm going to remove the dynamic menu and I'm going to put the Z plugin menu here because I'm going to need the IMM draw size. So the stone sizes that we were wanting is a 1.5 millimeter. So I'm going to key in 1.5, hit enter and click set IMM draw size. And for this, I'm also going to turn on symmetry. Uh, so I'm going to hit X on my keyboard to turn on symmetry. And now I can start to drag these out. So I'm going to left click and drag, hold control. And I already forgot to put the depth down. So let me undo that. The depth menu is in your brush menu. So click on your brush menu, go to depth. And I think this one needs to be around minus 12 or so. So let's try this again. Left click and drag, hold control. And that looks pretty good. I like that. So it has added these two stones and cutters to this existing subtool. So I'm going to split those out of there by going down to split and split to similar parts. Click OK. And now I can check it real quick. As you can see, my cutters were grouped together. There's my stones and they have been removed from this cloth subtool. So let's go ahead and I'm going to clear the mask real quick on the cloth. I'm going to click the down arrow on this subtool to start the Boolean there. Select Boolean subtraction on my cutters and then turn on live Boolean. So you can see my stones there on the surface and if I hide those you can see the seat that was left behind. So that'll be a good start when we actually go to set the stones to make sure they are going to be located in the right spot. Now the last thing I'm going to do is um, when when I cast this I want to add some color to it. Uh, I'm not I don't know about a silver or gold ghost. I would like it to be uh, kind of the classic white sheet kind of look to it. So I'm going to be using uh, one of the Invicon products, uh, more specifically uh, Luxart. And Luxart is kind of like a resin, but it has ceramic in it. So it's much more stout and you can grind and polish on it. But we do want to create some kind of mechanical hold to this surface. We're going to be using what's called bond to actually get it onto the surface so, so we can cure it. But having a mechanical hold to it will just make sure that it locks into this metal surface and that way it's not going to come loose down the road. So I'm actually going to use a similar method to what we did with the stones. Uh, but I'm going to create kind of like an undercut, like a little recessed area in various places around this model that has a bit of an undercut so it'll lock into place. So I'm going to append in a cylinder and select it and I'm going to turn on transparent mode 
so I can see it. Now, I'm not too worried about size at this point. Um, I do want the hole to be big enough to where we can get some, some material down in there. Uh, so I'm going to shoot for a hole that's at least probably millimeter and a half to two millimeters, somewhere in that area. So I'm going to bring up my gizmo, and I'm going to just stretch this out a little bit, and I'm going to give it a bit of a taper. So I'm going to go into Customize, click on Taper, and I'm just going to drag this little handle here. Uh, let me turn off the cloth so you can see it a little better. Uh, we'll turn off the armature as well. So this section down here will get embedded into the surface of the cloth. So let's say right here where my cursor is, is going to be the, the top of the metal. And then we're going to have the, the Luxart kind of on top of that. The Luxart will actually flow down into this hole. And because this end is kind of flared out, we have created an undercut there that will, will help lock that Luxart into the, into the surface. So I'm fine with this. So I'm going to click on the little gear icon and click accept. And now I can make my insert mesh brush from it. I'm not worried about uh, the fact that it's low poly at this point. Uh, because those holes are going to get filled in with material and covered up so you'll never see them and it would just add more geometry to my entire scene here. So I'm going to make sure that's oriented to the top. I uh, hit B on my keyboard to bring up my brush menu and click create insert mesh and click on new. So now we've got that one added in. Bring back that. I'm going to turn off the old cylinder. And now I can start playing around with size a little bit. Um, I'm going to turn symmetry off just because our cloth is not entirely symmetrical. I'm probably going to put about eight of these, you know, maybe four all the way around down along these areas and then a, a few more up here just to make sure that it's, it's completely locked into place. Uh, and I'm going to have to adjust my depth a little bit. And I'm going to have to guess at this, so I'm probably going to say around 35 or 40. Somewhere in there is probably going to be good. Let's test it down here towards the corner so, so we make sure we don't break through. So I'm just going to eyeball it. And we're not breaking through. Let's play around with some sizes real quick so we can use our IMM draw size. Um, I'm going to guess around, let's say 2.5 millimeters. Hit enter and then click set IMM draw size. So I'm going to draw it out, hold control, and that's pretty good. We're not getting any kind of breakthrough. So I think that's going to be okay. I could actually, uh, since it's an IMM brush I've got to split it out so let's split that out real quick and let's see if I can get a better view of it there we go so you can see it's 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 down in the surface probably about halfway or so so that's good about half millimeter in you can see how it kind of tapers out so it creates that undercut and that should be just fine but I don't want one down there so I'm going to select it and I'm just going to delete that one. All right, so now we can go ahead and start drawing these on. So I'm going to draw one here, Hold control, Oop, and I forgot I had symmetry on. Oop, there we go. So clear that mask. Control, and I'm just kind of dragging these out on some of these more raised areas. And I think I'm going to do some here as well. And once I kind of get it going, just hold control and then let go. Probably overdoing it a little bit, but it's best to overdo it just in case. So I'm going to clear that mask. And now i got to split this one out because I've just added more in there. So I need to split out these little parts. So I'm going to select that and go to split to similar parts. I get my new subtool here. And I can set that one to Boolean subtraction. And as you can see... I just create these little recessed areas all over the piece. So when this gets painted with the Luxart, 
uh, this this whole surface will be covered in it, but then we'll have these little pockets right here where the Luxart will actually fill up these recessed areas. And because we tapered it, it is actually an undercut that will hold that in there and be a nice, solid mechanical bond. But we're not going so deep where we're breaking through to the other side and potentially having that Luxart just leak through. So that's pretty much it. The last thing that I would probably do is maybe make sure that I have my cloth selected. I'm just gonna subdivide a couple times just to kind of smooth things out, delete those lower subdivisions, and then go ahead and run my booleans. So boolean out these pockets for the recessed area, the seat here, and then once I've created that boolean, uh, I'd probably decimate it and export it for 3D printing. Okay, so now we finished the design, the 3D printing, and the casting, and now we have a completed casting of our ghost pendant. For the stone setting and the Luxart, I'm gonna be handing it over to my teammate, John Sarton. John? Hey, thanks, Scott. Hey, this is a cool piece. Hi, I'm John with Rio Grande. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this ghost that Scott just designed in ZBrush and cast, and I'm going to put some black spinel eyes in it, and I'm also going to put a, uh, a ghostly coating of Luxart on it. Let's get started. Okay, let me fill you in to what you just watched. So I used Jet Basic. Jet Basic is a thermal plastic. I put it into water. I heated it up to about 160 degrees. As you saw, it turned from a white or an opaque to almost a transparent color. Then I formed it and I placed it into here. Now, the reason I use this plastic is so that I wouldn't get my metal jaws to start rusting. So I use that, and now you can see that this has formed a lug that will go into my vise. I can tighten it down, and now I can begin stone setting. You also now see that the jet basic is opaque white again. So as soon as it cools down to room temperature, it becomes very, very hard and your piece is locked in there so it doesn't move while you're setting. So my first step whenever I am setting stones is I will take the stones out of the container and put a few out on a tray. And then what I do is I am going to measure these stones. Now, it says 1.5 millimeter on the package and for the most part, it's going to be 1.5 millimeter, but stones can vary uh, depending on size anywhere from, you know, 0.1 to 0.2 of a millimeter. So I want to get stones that are about the same size. So that's about 58 thousandths, 58 thousandths. These look pretty good, 58 thousandths. I just want to get about four of them. Now I'll put the rest of these back into the bag and then I'll work with these stones. Another thing I like to do is go ahead and measure my burrs. Even though I might know that this third one in is 1.5 millimeter or thereabouts, I'm always going to check and make sure. So it was 58 thousandths. This one is 58 thousandths. There's actually different measurements on a setting burr. So if you are on the peaks of the cutting flutes, it's going to read a different measurement than if you are in the valleys of the cutting flutes. So always make sure that you are measuring the widest point of your burr.
All right, stones are set. Now I need to figure out a way of attaching this to a chain. So what I decided I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill a couple holes, one on either side of the little ghost's head, and then the chain will run through. So I'm going to use a set of calipers, and I'm just going to do a fairly eyeball job of this. I'm not going to get too overly technical on it, because I can always adjust where I need to adjust. So to start a pilot hole, I'm not going to use a center punch because it would be difficult on a rounded surface. I'm going to use a really small ball burr. I'm going to come where that mark is, get my burr going, and make a small indention. Flip it over, do the same on the other side. Okay, now I can drill my hole. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is apply the Luxart to the piece. I'm not gonna go through the entire process in this video. There are videos that are attached to the site that walk you step-by-step step through the application of the material. One thing I wanted to tell you is prior to me setting the stones, the piece was sandblasted using the uh, Corundum Media that the Invicon uh, recommends. And after I set the stones, I went ahead and I cleaned it up really good, ran it through the ultrasonic, and now the surface is ready to apply the material. So without further ado, let the compilation of application clips begin. So with Luxart, like all of the Invicon products, there is what they call a smear layer that is a byproduct of the curing process. And you have to remove that smear layer. And whenever you do, it actually turns the piece to a matte finish. Now I can go back, I can take uh, some muslin buffs, some polishing compound, and I can polish this back up to a high polish. However, I really like the effect that this matte finish has given this ghost. Um, I think it really brings out the, uh, the, the details. It brings out the, the light shadowing that I did in the cloth. So I'm going to leave it this way. I'm not going to polish it up. So that concludes the ZBrush to Luxart Ghost Pendant. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, please pop them down in the comments below. See you next time.